yeah this isn't a programming channel anymore you read the title it's exactly what you expect i'm not gonna randomly start talking about south american fish so first of all this is all in discord and this is a map this is ocean obviously this is a moderate climate this is tropical and hot as fuck this is pretty cold this is really fucking cold this is desert this is semi-arid these are mountains and these are rivers now the thing is that people can make countries and they can be a liberal capitalist democracy they can be a dramatic reenactment of north korea maybe even something in between countries can also invent stuff and fight each other and these systems are pretty complicated especially since they changed over time but i try my best to make it fair without also being obnoxious It all started with a big explosion, then a bunch of boring shit nobody cares about happened until a big ball emerged and evolved enough to have human life in this map. The first countries were Argentina, founded by Javier Millel on the Pisland continent, New Australia, founded by Bosnius Matero on a pointless island, Robberworld, founded by Dark Dot on the Robotinant continent, Officina della Pizza, founded by Womogo on a pointless island, Parfinistan, founded by Parfaisan on Pisland, and M&M, &M, founded by Mr. Best on two pointless islands. Quickly, Parfinistan, Argentina, and Robberworld grew to be respectively the most advanced countries by technology. If you look at this region, you might think, wow, these countries look nice, what if they united? You probably didn't, but they did unite, into the lazily named Argentina and Parfinistan, later renamed to the still lazily named New Argentina, which quickly grew to become the most powerful country on the surface of this planet. We're gonna use this crown ping to indicate that. Alex is now here, and he founded country trademark, located on the continent trademark continent. Also the leader of Officina della Pizza said the N-word, so he was banned and his leadership was transferred to Lugan Powell, since he was the only citizen. Lugan Powell proceeded to do absolutely nothing, however Womo Ago did apologize and make a comeback after a while though. Back to the present, Simon Fazweli human decided to join New Argentina to make it even more powerful. And they managed to invent the industrial revolution and its consequences. New Argentina also invented international trade, where country trademark sends diamonds, then New Argentina fabricates diamond pickaxes, and sends them to country trademark for more diamonds. One problem though, there's another country in the way. This isn't foreshadowing, just an observation. New Argentina thought they were geniuses, and barely noticed that Robberworld had become the most advanced country, which is unfortunate for New Argentina. Everything was being pretty peaceful, and it will keep being, because now that most of the countries were industrialized, God challenged countries to make the computer. However, they couldn't instantly skip to modern RTX 4090 iPhone 15 Cybermask 420, they would have to go through the ENIAC first. I assume Bosnia's Matero was feeling left behind, so he decided to do an, and I quote, very huge boat trip of mine, before speedrunning computing. That wasn't enough though, so he suddenly invaded M&M &M and country trademark, countries that didn't even really have militaries, and then New Argentina declared war on New Australia since they were invading their allies, starting the First World War. Unfortunately for you, the viewer, it only took them 12 minutes to come to a peace treaty. That is because New Argentina had a more elaborate plan, a more evil, twisted, sinister, plan, a more, Machiavellian plan, even. Their plan was called the Man Hats Project, and it involved making the first weapons of mass destruction, a weapon I like to call Hats of Death. It's like a hat, but you throw it, and it throws a bunch of lasers, which looks really cool. Simon Fazweli, the madman who came up with this plan as well as this script that calls him a madman, predicted that Hats of Death would make New Australia literally and collectively shit their pants. Simon Fazweli also had the bright idea of inviting He who shall not be named. He who shall not be named. Promised they would help with the condition that they would get their own country. 
they decided that it would be a part of country trademark, using the excuse that they were the real natives, which is blatantly and demonstrably false, it's complicated, we don't talk about it. But to help their excuse, they called the new country, UN, the gang planned everything, the war plan, the hat design, ballistic intercontinental missiles, and most importantly, how big would be the territory that the UN would have. The gang was forced to accept this obnoxious division, with country trademark losing all of their original cities, and being forced to move to this desert, where they would also lose their entire economy of selling diamonds and buying diamond pickaxes, with the UN having an additional excuse of country trademark not helping in the plan, even though Alex couldn't, since he was touching grass or something. The plan was ready. New Argentina officially declared war on New Australia, starting the Second World War. New Argentina started by invading Melnie and Snow, and it didn't take very long for them to take pretty much all of New Australia. Also M and M was also getting liberated, they weren't really an ally of New Argentina but now they definitely would, free real estate. After that, New Argentina made sure to showcase their sick laser bullshit, proclaiming that they were now the true gods. They presented the Treaty of Middle of Nowhere to New Australia, New Australia would keep their shitty island, however New Argentina would get the oil there. Soda bars would keep being part of New Australia, but New Argentina would use it to test weapons of mass destruction, country trademark and M&M &M would regain independence along with the creation of the UN, and New Australia would have to pay a bunch of money. They weren't really happy, to say the least. Bosnia's Matero was especially mad about the fact that M&M &M would be brought back, which is intriguing. They kept arguing until New Argentina went, fuck it, and gave 10 minutes for Bosnia's Matero to accept the treaty, otherwise the entirety of New Australia would have to move from the shitty island to the Soda Bars Desert, which is worse than shitty. The 10 minutes passed and he didn't sign the treaty, so more fighting happened. New Australia was vaporized to death, New Argentina had at least three dead people probably. More arguing, God removed admin to make sure the world doesn't end. Bosnia's Matero finally signed an updated treaty where Soda Bars wouldn't get nuked, in exchange for more money, as well as resources and patents. That was intense, to say the least. So the Council of Nations Together Strong, or CONS, not to be confused with CUNTS, was created, where people Pinky promised to try to not blow up the whole world again. Also, he who shall not be named, would touch grass for a month, save that for later. You know what would be great after a war that almost ended humanity as we know it? post postmodern, post-industrial digital fourth industrial revolution, or the digital age, for short. New Argentina Kick started the PPMP IDFIR with the wide world of web, available on New Argentina and country trademark. New Australia also made their own internet, the interwebs, the difference was not only in country availability, but also the fact that the wide world of web was significantly more advanced, having advanced services and a disgusting programming language, while the interwebs only had a single general purpose channel. The computers themselves were similar in performance though. After country trademark finished having an existential crisis due to UN, they made internet trademark, which was exactly like the wide world of web but with worse names. While Javier Millel was browsing the wide world of web, Someone probably told him to touch grass, which inspired him to research space technology and discover a new planet, Benjamin, which is truly out of this world. <laughs> Unfortunately, they made their colony be called New City Place Percentage Pro Max II, but Benjamin was unlivable so nobody really gave a shit about it. In other news, Robber World remembered they existed, so they became a democracy. A day later, Dark Dot left, and the leadership was transferred to real Dark Dot. Restoring the authoritarian dictatorship, people really didn't feel like making anything meaningful, so drugs were invented, and were completely legal everywhere except New Australia. Healthier inventions popped up, new operating systems, programming languages, and fads, which I'm gonna skip since we still have five different Pelnet versions to cover, however, he who shall not be named, returned, which reminded world leaders to touch grass, which is bad if you're an average citizen that enjoys not being vaporized to death. Robber World let a new country appear, very hot, which just so happens to be the snowy part of Robber World. However, something big happened. The existential crisis in country trademark was growing each day, which inspired them to ally with their former invader to annihilate UN for good, threatening to start World War III.
After the announcement, new Argentina Emperor Javier Millel said knew it, then, I might join, which would have definitely crashed the stock market if it existed in Pelnet. Unfortunately for them, UN took the strategy of pretending like there was wasn't happening, which wouldn't work in real life, but is genius anyway. In this scenario of uncertainty and shit fuckery, Simon Fazweli founded Oceania in the north of Soda Bars, with the goal being to create the worst country ever, with the name of course being taken from the hit dystopian novel 1984 by George Orwell. I'm gonna cover Oceania in excruciating detail, since it's crucial for the development of a new major Pelnet culture. It started simple, with a capital called Airstrip 1, a channel for totally real facts, a place for getting bread, and a camp where you could concentrate. The supreme leader of all you survey wanted people to work in the Obamian mine, Obamian being of course the second ultimate energy source, the number one being of course the fucking sun. However, Bosnia's Matero didn't want to mine. He was there for the tourism, so he was exiled. Womp womp. Oceania had the first Pelnet Comlink, Newspeak, taken of course from the hit dystopian novel 1984 by George Orwell. Newspeak wasn't standardized, the only guide was to talk in a stupid way, which caused confusion since people have different definitions of stupid, so Simon Fazweli just pretended that Newspeak never existed, then he made pills for people with communication problems, aka using Newspeak. At the peak of Oceania, you could even get Mountain Dew Baja Blast to go along with your bread, however the Newspeak issues led to the inevitable collapse of oceanic civilization. Oceania was ahead of its time, I'd say. Yeah also the entirety of Oceania happened in 6 IRL hours, with Oceania and New Argentina agreeing to blow up a dam in Oceania to end it with a bang. The territory and ruins were going to be transferred through a giveaway, and Officina de la Pizza won it, however Bosnia's Matero and Javier Millal pressured Simon Fazweli to re-roll. Since ruins are so valuable in this economy, the giveaway was re-rolled and it went to Robber World. Javier Millal was also inspired by the Oceania culture, so he formed Newspokia, even though he already was the leader of an international superpower. The important part is that Newspokia standardized Newspeak as a set of rules that make English look stupid, creating the first Pelnet language, as well as forming the Speakspeak language family. Anyways, remember Parfanistan, the country that merged with Argentina to form New Argentina? Well, they declared independence in a remarkably peaceful way, now being called Parfrando. God suddenly felt like making a new island, called fucking. It didn't even last two hours before being nuked. Country Trademark and New Australian were pretty annoyed about the UN conflict though. So they tried to negotiate, but unfortunately it didn't work, only inspired God to create a global pandemic of Ligma. What's Ligma, you may ask? Ligma is a serious disease that causes itchy balls and ball combustion. It appeared precisely in the UN country trademark border, with UN rapidly building a wall to see if they could stop the spreading. The disease magically spread to former Oceania, then Robberworld and Parfrando closed their borders, and God magically gave Ligma to Alex, drastically affecting the stock market. Unfortunately, uh, Alex was visiting New Argentina at the moment, so Ligma was officially in Pissland now. Robberworld was rapidly developing a cure, while New Argentina offered masks to protect citizens. No, you don't wear the masks in your balls. The Ligma virus evolved to also give depression, and global governments were desperate, even trying to kick people in the balls to see if it helped. Fortunately, the Ligma pandemic eventually ended. Unfortunately, at least for country trademark and New Australian, UN stopped fucking around and started a process of rapid industrialization. They also made a satellite with a gun. This led New Argentina to ally with their former arch nemesis to see if they could annihilate UN, so you could call it World War 3 now. Country trademark and UN argued for a while, until they suddenly decided to give their territory to Parfrando, presumably to make the situation worse. New Australian and country trademark declared war on Parfrando, Newspokia merged with New Argentina, Parfrando proper built a new island to try to escape this hell, New Australian got the city of snow even though that was a major part of the country trademark economy before the wars however this is a completely different geopolitical scenario so this is a stupid observation, then he who shall not be named returned to former UN territory to steal the old nuclear project then finished it to new country trademark then spread radiation through the wind to cause a global environmental disaster. Bosnia's Matero personally shot he who shall not be named however he who shall not be named had a new variation of Ligma so Bosnia's Matero died but he's a cat so he still had 8 lives the radiation spread becoming a global hot potato they were still arguing then he who shall not be named tried to make a revolution in country trademark making both Alex and Javier Millal enter their villain arc inhale, exhale but there was something shiny in the sky every day that something seemed to grow until on Christmas it hit
but there was hope. Benjamin was there, so several important people moved to Benjamin right before the asteroid fell. It was the start of a new era, the space era, the Solol system. Now, the Solol system represents the first confusing time travel occasions in the history of Pelnet, since Solol system is partially based on Pelnet. It did in fact explode however space technology is much better and some people revived. The Solol system also had new war and invention systems, to prevent people from pulling in UN and fucking up the world so bad that God himself has to throw an asteroid. However, Solol system was kind of abandoned, until months later, when the original Pelnet returned. Pelnet 2 removed the space stuff, but kept the Solol system war and invention systems, and also added an ocean channel that nobody uses, and a new map which is like the old one, but the new Australian island was replaced with a new continent. It's important to note that Pelnet 2 is a different timeline, nothing created before exists anymore, unless it's recreated. I also mentioned that some names would change, but be technically the same person, but they didn't in Pelnet 2, that only happened in later Pelnets. Anyways, here's our majestic set of countries, Lenkin's Land, founded by Alex in a shitty island, Westland, founded by a boring name in a shitty island, Red Delta, founded by Mr. Best in Continent Trademark, Milk Zone, founded by Milk Homeless Man, and the Nomian Empire, founded by Javier Millel, Bosnius Matero, and Parfaisan on Pisland and Lelpla. It's founded by three people since there was newest Australian by Bosnius Matero and Parfrando by Parfaisan, but they united with the Nomian Empire in the same day they were founded. So it doesn't really count. Lenkin's land's ultimate goal was to destroy the nature of their island until it looked like fucking Mars, and impressively, they managed to speedrun both the Industrial Revolution and the first computer. Westland, on the other hand, didn't want to become Mars, so they were spending a lot of resources on military technology. Everyone wanted to speedrun post-post-modern post-industrial digital fourth industrial revolution, with the Nomian Empire, Lenkin's Land, and Westland constantly leapfrogging each other. Meanwhile, Red Delta was busy being communist, and the Milk Zone was busy making references to human reproduction. A massive hurricane was headed towards the Nomian capital, and not even that could stop their speedrun of the Industrial Revolution and its disastrous consequences. Also, the Nomian Empire and Lenkin's land made a deal to ruin every world map in the world. Anyways, at this point Simon Fazwaley thought it would be fun to make a sequel to Oceania, Shitfuck Area, in the Robotanant continent. Remember Womo ago, he's back, with Officina della Pizza in the continent trademark continent. It seems that people not only wanted to speedrun environmental issues, but also speedrun geopolitical issues as well, so the Nomian Empire invaded Shitfuck area, and they won, since Shitfuck area didn't have time to develop any technology. Simon Fazwaley wasn't happy with that. He needed revenge, so he joined Lenkin's land to develop Obamium, and convinced Alex to start a world war. Spoiler alert, this war ended the world, so I'm gonna cover this war in excruciating detail to artificially make this longer. Lenkin's land started by invading Fort Ignacio from Sigma, then the Nomian Empire reacted by invading Sigma, Ligma, and Smoozie, since Officina della Pizza was an ally of Lenkin's land. Alex remembered that he also owned a global supermarket empire, it's complicated we don't talk about it, so he bombed his own empire to harm the Nomian Empire, since apparently the Nomians hadn't discovered fucking agriculture yet I assume, and Lenkin's land took back Sigma as well. Parfaisan decided to send people from Parfrando to Sigma, while Bosnius Matero challenged Alex to a match of chess, don't ask. At this point, Alex got imposter syndrome, he was considering surrendering, which would be a really fucking boring ending, so Alex tried to negotiate splitting the Nomian Empire, while Simon Fazwaley and Javier Millel talked about how really fucking boring that would be. After hours of fucking around, the capital of Lenkin's land was finally nuked, continent trademark was nuked, then Alex speedrun making a fucking interstellar ball capable of planetary destruction because no one gave a shit anymore, the Lenkin's ball. Alex told the entire world to hail his balls, before annihilating the entire planet with the Nomian Empire. That was intense, but not as intense as- So Pelnet 3 didn't have any changes to the systems, but it did change the map, with it now having a supercontinent and a bunch of pointless islands, one of them looking remarkably like Bolivia. This was also the first Pelnet where the names changed, Javier Millel is now Otto von Lelsmark, and Bosnius Matero is now Catherine von Lelsmark, they have the same last names because they married, forming the Austronomian Empire. Speaking of countries, there's now Parfrando III by Parfaisan, Nova Lenkinia by Alex, and Milk Zone II by Homeless Milkman. Parfrando, despite being in a tiny island in the middle of nowhere, managed to speedrun computing and the Industrial Revolution, but they didn't want to build a global empire, they just wanted sick arcade games. 
Later we got two new countries, Officina della Pizza by Womogo and Shitfakeria Empire by Simon Fazweli, which also had two languages, Newspeak, a variant of Newspeak with less stupid spelling, and the Mojaspeak, which was closer to a real language. But it was too obnoxious to use so Newspeak became common in Shitfakeria while the speak became more popular in the Austronomian Empire. Yeah this isn't realistic, how could have you guessed? Unfortunately for Shitfakeria, Otto von Lelsmark was determined to make Plelnet 3 be an exact copy of Plelnet 2, so they immediately invaded Shitfakeria. Parfrando and the Austronomian Empire kept evolving their technology to achieve post-postmodern post-industrial digital fourth industrial revolution. And they also expanded to be really big. Eventually Shitfakeria got independence, and then Simon Fazweli married Womo ago, presumably because he forgot to ask, fellas, is it gay to marry a man? Forming the Commonwealth of Shitfakeria. Everything was too peaceful, so God sent a series of concentric circles emanating from this red dot, but that didn't do a whole lot, so then there was earthquakes, hurricanes, floodings, wildfires, and volcanic eruptions, drastically affecting the stock market. But even that wasn't enough, it was so boring that Alex casually sold the entirety of Nova Lenkinia to the Austronomian Empire, so now the first person to make a colony on the moon would be officially known as really cool. The Austronomians were the first. Blah blah blah, Simon Fazweli bought Nova Lenkinia and gave several world leaders schedule 1 narcotics, but then Otto von Lelsmark and Alex had a really bright and smart idea, what if we declared war on the entirety of the observable universe? The aliens were seemingly pretty annoyed about the whole thing, so Pelnet was tragically shattered into a million pieces. So far every global civilization collapsed for stupid reasons, so what if there was no government to do dumb shit? That's right, Pelnet 4 has a narco cap- Don't you dare touching the comment section, this is not about politics, this is about fictional geopolitics. So this is the new world map. If it looks familiar it's because it just so happens to be Earth but upside down, so I'm gonna use real world place names. If you don't know, ANCAP is- I see you going to the comments- an ideology where there's no government, only capitalism, and if that doesn't help a whole lot, Planet people didn't really understand it either so we just ended up having companies acting as government. Stop it, don't comment. Here's the name changes, Otto von Lelsmark is now Romulus, and Bosnius Matero only got his name changed to Catherine von Lelsmark since it was important to the plot. Now it's Bosnius Matero again. The first companies were the Lenkens Mega Conglomerate by Alex on the middle of a giant desert in Asia, Kony Development by Parfaisan in Greenland, the Romnell Company by Romnellus in South America, Slough Industries by Simon Fazweli in Australia and South America, and Freedom Organization by Bosnius Matero in North America. It seems that the Middle Ages are really boring, so people again speedrun the Industrial Revolution, really big rail infrastructure, guns, pure Colombian cocaine etc. Anyways, Lenkens conglomerate and Slough Industries merged into the Fazweli Corporation, and they soon did what any reasonable person in their right mind would, plot an assassination of Romulus. Unfortunately it didn't work, so the Fazweli Corporation split up but still kept being partners, Romnell and the Freedom Organization merged into Romfrankia, and soon all companies worked together to reach fully automated space luxury capitalism. Grow, grow, grow. We reached a level of computing similar to the first planet. We had intercontinental blazingly fast rail infrastructure, the three major global companies agreed to turn Africa into an uninhabitable hellscape for mining and testing weapons of mass destruction, Romfrankia had three emperors but I didn't feel like finding when exactly the changes happened, and they all decided to end this all with a bang. They started the fucking war of fucking fucking, which was a war whose goal was destroying the whole world for fun. Meanwhile, Lelgustus, the new emperor of Romfrankia, uploaded his mind to the Matrix so he could live forever. Overall, Pelnet 4 was a massive success. So I did just say Pelnet 4 was a massive success, however Pelnet 5 brings back countries, along with a new gimmick, people now spawn in random places, and they have to discover the parts of the world to reveal the map, like in the good old times, only real ones remember it, like if relatable. This is of course the new map, you can't see anything since you have to wait for people to discover land. It's also important to note that due to the whole Matrix thing, the Pelnet 5 Lelgustus still has memories of Pelnet 4. The first countries were Maladonia by Lelgustus, Slough Empire by Simon Fazweli, Kyra by Bosnius Matero, Officina Agoza by Womo Ago, Parfrando by Parfaisan, and Grey by Milk Homeless Man, which is the only country that never got its land revealed, that's why it's called Grey. Blah blah blah, Maladonia, Kyra, and Slough evolved technologically as well as expanding their territories, creating copious amounts of cities and ludicrously land rail infrastructure. After they explored their respective continents, Maladonia and Slough sent boats to explore more lands, and maybe even give smallpox to natives. 
Lelgustus himself was on the Maladonian boat, and they eventually found a tiny island, however, the boat sucked and Lelgustus fucking died, with Tibelius becoming the new emperor. Parferando also sent their own boat to explore their continent, and Slough found a new continent, with Maladonia also sending their own boat to explore the new land. Slough quickly established a bunch of cities there, while Maladonia not only discovered all of Parferando's continent, but also found a chili-shaped island and a pointless island in the middle of nowhere. It seems that Alex and Tibelius were really inspired by Pelnet 4, so they made two companies, the Insert Demonum for Slauheimer and the Maladonian Malbro. What did these companies do? They make fucking bagels. Anyways, the important part is that they were competing not by making cheaper and or better bagels, but instead were doing copyright trolling, real term, to each other. Also Maladonia and Kari united under Coronado. Tragically, Tibelius and Alex had serious health issues after so much copyright trolling, they almost died. Meanwhile, Slough Empire made a fucking stellar octangular island, starting a new era of big dumb shit. Alex was a pioneer in that, creating the Pickle Megalopolis, a new international center for business and travel, featuring a skyscraper bigger than your mom's heart. Then Simon Fazweli made islands spelling the word fuck, and Coronado then made a floating island, somehow. Coronado wanted to make a new planet, however then they decided to go, fuck it, and declared war on Slough, which was truly tragic if you enjoyed living. I didn't know where to talk about this, but stupid languages that aren't languages also made a comeback, this is Maladonian and this is fuckish. Anyways the world is over, which is unfortunate, so here I decided to make one Pelnet to rule them all. So why is Pelnet 6.9 the Pelnet to rule them all? Well, now there's multiverse time travel, you can travel between the nether and the end, timelines can connect in ways that no one can understand, if you die you go to the nether or the end, and everyone starts at the second industrial revolution. However, after five Pelnets, people stop giving a shit, making Pelnet 6.9 a catastrophic catastrophe. Long story short, it took five seconds to have an interdimensional incompatibility, Tibelius and Bosnius Matero united to make the Trigian Empire. Alex and Tibelius managed to corrupt the fabric of reality, Slough went to the nether, Alex merged the current timeline with the Solol system, people went insane, Trigian invaded Slough, Trigian made an Argentina island, Alex made Epic Land, Slough made a Brazil island, Trigian made a Lel Club island, it's complicated we don't talk about it, Alex made a multinational hypermarket empire, and then people just kind of abandoned Pelnet. I know that's not a very good ending. Help I'm stuck in a computer monitor floating in a space JPEG.